Angela, and you're listening to Homeschool Unrefined, the podcast where we keep homeschool simple, real, and fun. And this is Marin. You've got episode 89, Top 10 Things We've Learned in 21 Years of Homeschooling with Pam Barnhill. We're going to talk about that in just a few minutes, but before we do, we would like to welcome all of you and say hello. Thanks for being here. Hi, everybody. So glad you're here listening. Um, We want to thank our Patreon listeners um, for supporting us and making this happen. If you would like to support us on Patreon, you can just go to patreon.com slash homeschool unrefined and you'll find the levels where you can support us and you'll find a great community of people there. Um, We get to talk a lot. And if you support us at the $8 level, you get to be in a, a Voxer group with us, which is has been so fun to have that community yeah we're just getting to know people a little bit better which is nice yeah Yeah. talking homeschool and books and health and wellness and lots of other things yeah you may have noticed we forgot to mention it last week but we have new intro music so (laughs) yes along with our new logo we got some new music keeping it fresh and a new intro Mm -hmm. it's another thing that we have been wanting to do yep like at least make a new intro for a while and we just have not done it. So yeah, we're, we're su- making it happen. We're super excited about that. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah. And so if you're new here, we just wanted to explain a little bit about our podcast. Um, so we are here to hopefully help you feel good about what you're doing and not feel like you need to be doing more or be mm-hmm. doing things better. And we are hopefully here to take things off of your plate rather than adding things to your plate. We want you to leave right. leave this listening experience feeling like I've got this and not, oh, okay, I need to go buy this thing, download this thing, research mm-hmm. this to do this better. We want you to feel confident in what you're already doing. Yeah, right. Like we want you to feel good about where you're at and who you are and the things you bring to the table. Those are the best things for your kids and for yourself. So we're here to just remind you of those things. For sure. Yes. Yep. So we, Marin, you and I had a big weekend. We had a bit big weekend, yeah. Angela. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. We just got back late last night. Mm-hmm. We have a little bit of a weekend hangover today. We do. <laughs> I'm, I hit a wall. Yeah. <laughs> but I've got coffee, so yeah. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> so it was really fun. We went to Chicago, which, you know, for us, it's about a seven hour drive. So, yep. you know, it's doable. And it's reachable. It's, it's attainable. It is doable. <laughs> <laughs> it feels so far away. Yeah. But then when you drive it, I mean, it's... It's not. It's, it's to- not. Totally doable. So... Yes. Yeah. So it's like, you know, a nearby really big city fun place that you can go to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we did yeah. that and we mainly... We went to see Hamilton, which yeah. was amazing. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I've been thinking about it so much. I know. Yeah. yeah, we loved that. But the main reason we went was to see the Popcast live. And so yes. the pop- our, our favorite podcast, our favorite podcast is the Popcast. Yes. And, yes. you know, I was thinking about this. I know at the beginning of our podcast, we shared a lot about the Popcast and how much we, we did. like them. Yeah. But we yeah. haven't really talked about them in a while. And so they right. they are our favorite podcast. They mm-hmm. um, talk about pop culture, uh, but, you know, not in a way that you need to know what they're talking about before you <laughs> Cause listen, because you, you don't. Which is good, because I don't. I don't know either. I yeah. never do. So they talk about <laughs> movies and books and people and TV shows and stuff like that. But the main thing is, they're very funny. They're, yes. They're hum- I could listen to them talk about anything. They're like um, two comedians who bounce off each other so well. They've got great chemistry. Yeah. And I mean, I just, it's a, I feel like as a homeschool parent, you know, mm-hmm. who is, you know, working hard all day, it is a mm-hmm. way that I can take a little break and laugh. And that's exactly what I need. So, right. And be in this whole different world than where we are all day. Totally. <laughs> you know, totally. <laughs> yeah. So, and then we both support them on Patreon because then if you do, you get even, ex- even more stuff. So, yeah, we got to be VIPs. We got to be VIPs at their live show, <laughs> which, which was worth ex- it, which was exciting. <laughs> it was. 
<laughs> yeah, and then we got to meet them. So that was And you got to do you got to you stood up and did a Q you know, they had a Q and A for all the V the VIPs and yep. you stood up and asked them a question, which I was did. I thought I thought really gutsy. Was, Way to go. I was very nervous. But also I was like, This is my chance. Get up there right away. <laughs> I know, you're right. Um, and so I asked them if they had any podcasting advice. Yeah. Which they did. And which I completely forgot. What what was their advice? <laughs> I don't even remember. I think just keep at it. Well, like, their advice was commit keep going. for a period of time. Commit. Yes. Like yes. say if you want to start a podcast, say that you're going to do it for six months or a year and then mm-hmm. do it. Because, you know, and I've heard that before from a lot of people because the first few yeah. episodes can be really hard. Or like even after the first few Mm -hmm. like after the Mm -hmm. excitement then like doing it weekly it's hard it's a commitment and so it is yep yep, yeah so stay committed and then Knox also said like balance if you have so he knew we had two of us and so he said Mm -hmm. balance your strengths which I think you and I do that really well like we're both not good at the same things you know we're We're both both good at different things (laughs) (laughs) in other words yeah you know you're right it's so true yeah yeah I think we we balance each other out really well. Yes. <laughs> and yet we're good at a lot of important things too. Yeah, both similar things. So yeah. 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 So we work. We work well together. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> so that was super fun and exciting. I loved it. Oh, yeah. And then we, you know, afterwards they had a, well, they had kind of like a, was it an impromptu meet and greet or was it planned? I don't know. I don't think we knew it was actually happening, but no. they had a little meet and greet. And so we got to go talk to him afterwards, yeah. which was, I felt like I was, you know, I was fangirling. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I didn't even know what to say. I couldn't, I didn't have words. Right. And they were so nice. So nice. Yeah. And acted like, which I'm sure they well, maybe probably wasn't acting, but they wanted <laughs> to meet us. <laughs> yeah they you know acted like they really wanted to meet us which oh yeah they probably did I know yeah which is uh, so nice of them I just think they are they were probably exhausted oh yeah that they I would have been oh my gosh <laughs> yeah so anyway so. that was super exciting and yep. um also we wanted to just acknowledge it's the start of the school year and we have um lots of thoughts about mm-hmm. the start of the school year <laughs> <laughs> lots of things we want to talk about and we have feelings. We have yeah, feelings. We have, we've got feelings about it. Things that are going well and things that aren't really going well. And we are actually going to record an episode all about that on Friday for our Patreon subscribers. So if mm-hmm. you're interested, it would be a great time to become a sub- subscriber. Yes. And the great thing about Patreon is we can dive a little deeper too because, you know, I mean, we we get real on this podcast for sure, but we get we have the chance to go even a little deeper in our Patreon content yeah. feels a little bit more comfortable because it's a little more intimate it's not public mm-hmm. you know yeah so yeah. so we'd love to have you over there yeah for sure um today we are really excited because we have pam barnhill on the show and we had this idea because pam has been homeschooling for a long time and so have the two of us so mm-hmm. we thought it would be fun to get together and talk about the top 10 things we've learned in our 20 combined 21 years of homeschooling yeah if you have been around the homeschool world uh for a bit of, for a short time even you have most likely heard about Pam Barnhill she has a blog she has a book that just came out not too long ago called Better Together and it's all about morning time um she also has three podcasts and they are the Homeschool Solution Show, Your Morning Basket, and Homeschool Snapshots. And so mm-hmm. she is a wealth of knowledge. And we just yeah. thought it would be great for the yeah. three of us. This is really a conversation among three people. Yeah. much was, yeah. Not really an interview, but more of a, the three of us having a conversation about things we've for learned. Sure. And yeah. so it was really fun. And so we are very um, excited for you guys to hear this episode. So enjoy. Hi, Pam. Hi, how are you? Great. Welcome to Homeschool Unrefined. We are so happy you are here. Well, thank you so much for having me as a guest. This is going to be fun. Yeah. I'd love to just start and have our listeners get to know you in case they haven't um, heard your podcast before or read your blog. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your family and your work? 
Sure, I would love to. Um, my name is Pam Barnhill, and I have a website at Homeschool Solutions with Pam Barnhill. That's at pambarnhill.com, if that's enough Pam Barnhills for you. <laughs> and um, I have three homeschooling podcasts. Wow. I have the Your Morning Basket podcast, which is all about morning time. I have the uh, Homeschool Solution Show, which is an audio blog. It's a lot of fun. Just like you would have an audio book, bloggers actually read their blog posts. So oh. they end up being between five and 15 minutes long. And it's just really great to listen to while you're doing dishes or walking the dog. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't have time to sit and read blogs anymore, which most That's of right. us don't. Yep. Yeah. And then I have the homeschool snapshots podcast, which are little glimpses into the lives of homeschoolers. Mm -hmm. And right now I have a co-host, uh, a guest host who is helping me with that. Amy Milzik yes. from oh. rock your homeschool has been doing the, the hosting on that one just to kind of lighten my load a little bit. Yeah. So yeah. I've been homeschooling for eight years. Um, my oldest is going into eighth grade right now and we've homeschooled since the very beginning. I was a public school teacher. I say I'm a recovering mm -hmm. public school teacher. <laughs> Um, Us too. I did that for seven <laughs> years. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, my husband and I have been married for 24 years and mm -hmm. we live in Alabama with dogs. We have three dogs. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a lot of dogs. It is we, a lot of dogs. Yeah. We have a lot in common. We are also, uh, recovering. Yes. Yep. Public school teachers. And my <laughs> oldest is going into eighth grade too. So that's exciting. And we just got a dog. So. And Mara just got a dog. I know. We are new dog First owners. Dog. New dog owners. Yeah. We know who to call if we have questions. <laughs> it's a slippery slope. I'm just warning y'all on that one. Once you get one, it's downhill. There. You know what? Yeah. I can see it. I can see yeah. it. <laughs> because it we have four. This morning. Yeah, we have four kids, and I just feel like we need more dogs for these kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's dangerous. Don't go there. Oh. My son was just looking this morning on the Humane Society website. Oh, no. <laughs> I know. I was like, don't start. <laughs> oh. Well, Pam, we like to uh, talk about personalities on our podcast a lot. That's kind of a major theme. So we just thought we'd ask you, do you know your Myers-Briggs type and or your Enneagram type? Yeah, I'm really familiar with my Myers-Briggs type. Okay. Um, it's INTJ is oh, yeah. what I am. Oh, so yes. I'm kind of, yeah. Yeah. Um, Sadly for my husband. Oh, <laughs> oh really? No. I'm, I'm the bossy one. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we need that. My husband is an INTJ, yeah. and I very much appreciate his decisiveness and <laughs> we his get big ideas. Done. Yes, He's got big, big ideas. ideas. Yeah, big, yeah, very much big ideas. <laughs> yes, so I love, it. Um, I love it. And then Enneagram, I'm not as familiar with. Mm. I have a friend who does it, and I, I kind of uh, poke fun at her and make her mad because I call it witchcraft. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's your witchcraft thing. And she kind of like rolls her eyes at me. But I have been told by close friends that I'm a number three. Yeah, that's the achiever. Yeah, I can that see that. Sense. You work hard and yep. like to have lots of goals and get things done and... Yeah. Three podcasts yeah. and I Three love podcasts it. Yep. And your homeschooling. Yep. Yeah. It makes sense. <laughs> yep, for sure. All right. So we are going to, this is the first time we've ever done this type of interview before, Pam. So you're kind of our guinea pig. <laughs> okay. But we're really excited about it. I think this is going to be great. It'll be more of a conversation than an interview. Um, what we're going to do today is just talk about things we've learned over the years of homeschooling, just some of the big, you know, the big overarching pictures you don't, you might not see after your first or second year, but after a few years, you're starting to see patterns. Like this is something that I'm, I've learned and I, it's helped me grow as a person too. And not only in homeschool. So we just thought this, would, this might be a great way to start the year for everyone. It sounds wonderful. To keep some of these things in mind. So would you want to, why don't you get started and you can tell us your first thing and, and, um, we'll just chat about it a little bit. Okay, so one of the things that I have learned in my years of homeschooling is not to let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when I was a new homeschool mom, I had these, you know, little preschoolers there looking up at me and I wanted, you know, I wanted to do something, first of all. I mean, that's what moms of preschoolers want to do is they want to do something because yep. it can be a little boring to be there with preschoolers. <laughs> yes. And so, you know, yes. I really wanted to do something. And so I, 
you know, if one book about apples was good, then surely 15 books about (laughs) apples was fabulous, you know, and I would spend all my time looking for the best books and the best activities and Mm. pouring it all on and really not connecting as much as I should have, you know, and not, I could have spent a lot more time doing the things with my kids than trying to find just the perfect thing. And even as you move into things like math curriculum or writing curriculum or things like that, sometimes, um, and I love to tell people is the best curriculum is the one that gets done. Sure. Mm -hmm. Whatever that takes in your house, you know, you're, you're every, we're always looking for for the perfect thing, but sometimes the best one is just the one that gets done. So don't let the perfect that you're looking for be the enemy of the good enough. That's really going to work. Yes. That is so good. And I think, um, I'm thinking about that right now with our, some of my older kids who are into, into something might be into horses or whatever. Like you do, we don't have to do everything in the world that has to do with horses. They can do a few things with horses and that's okay. You know, you don't have to overdo it. You don't have to give her the best horse experience. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Give her something to look forward to when, right? you know, yeah. she's still interested in horses when she's an adult. She can go and purchase the best horse experience. <laughs> right, and it means right? so much more because she bought it. Well, yeah. and also I think sometimes we can ch- try to do it so perfect that it just, it's overwhelming for our kids. It's like, yeah, you are, you're overdoing this perfection thing. And yeah, it's like, I don't like it anymore. <laughs> I can do that yeah. anyway. Anyway. All right. Hey, Maren, yes. do you want to say your first thing? Yeah. Number two. So, all right. So um, something I've learned over the years is that connections need to pre- precede learning. So learning really doesn't happen until um, I think uh, they're, the kids feel loved or my kids feel loved and feel a connection with me. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have to, that means I have to, a lot of times put away my to-do list and just do something, just be there, be present. Sometimes it's just playing a game, reading a book, you know, being silly, something. Yeah. We just have to, I have to let go of the to-do list sometimes, um, make the connection and then the to-do list can often get done very quickly. Right. Because they're kind of, they're really needing that connection. And so it's like, you know, um, it's preventing what you really want to get done, which is maybe your to-do list or your right, right. curriculum yes, or whatever yes. you have, because they're really needing that connection. Yes, exactly. And and um, it's just so much, I mean, really, it's efficiency, too. <laughs> I mean, it seems like it's not, because to me, it seems, it seems like, oh, my goodness, I just want to get my th- the things we need to get done first. Um, but oftentimes those things get done so much quicker. If they're feeling loved, if I find speaking their love, love language, those kind of things, then learning often just naturally happens so much right. more effect- yep. effectively and efficiently. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree. We actually start our day with something we call morning time here. Yeah. Yeah. And we all get, come to the table and learn together. And that's a place where a lot of times my kids, we fill up that little tank first mm-hmm. with yeah. things things that they love, things that excite them, things that they're passionate about. And then we move on to the harder stuff. Right. You know, right. I have a blog post that's don't start your homeschool day with math. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> Let's do some of the other stuff first yes, and so good. get that momentum going. Yeah. So, so good. I love that. Isn't your thing. All right, Angela, how about you? Yeah. Okay. So my first one kind of has to do with more beginning of the year, mm-hmm. but it could like apply to the day, to the individual day. It's plan for less than you think. Yeah. Or I was going to say, take your plans and cut them in half yes. because I have a tendency. Now I didn't, I don't think I did it this year, although it remains to be seen because we haven't officially started yet. <laughs> sure. But um, I have a tendency to plan way too much and think that we're going to fit all these wonderful things in because there's so many great things we all want to do. So many I great mean, things. There's so many amazing things coming at me and my kids that we all just want to fit in. And so I have a tendency to think, well, if there's a block of time, then I can surely do that there, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, but what I have learned is t- to take my big, exciting list and really cut it in half. Yep. And let's be realistic <clears throat> about what actually we're going to do. And then the day goes much smoother or the year mm-hmm. will go much smoother. Mm-hmm. And then if we have time or we're bored, 
we can always add some things in. Sometimes I keep a list of if we're bored, right. we can do these things. Well, if I at... have time, do these things. Um, then they're on a list somewhere and I feel good about it. Like yeah. I didn't forget about it. But And it's just there if there's a rainy day or we need it. But it's not on that master plan. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I find if we cram our schedule too full, then if an interest comes up that they have that yeah. they want to do, yeah. I feel like, oh, well, I've already planned all this stuff. We can't yeah. follow that interest. And so by leaving that extra time, you know, because there's going to be something that comes up that they really want to learn about. Exactly. Right. Exactly. It, and so much learning happens when it's something they want to learn about, yeah. too. Um, and then also, I like the idea of giving a lot of attention to the most important things. When you have crammed your schedule, it's really hard to focus on all of those things. Right. Right. Yeah. Yep. yeah. All right. So Pam, how about you? Okay. So my next one is some is better than none mm -hmm. because homeschool moms tend to be perfectionist <laughs> and we build up these ideas in our heads that everything has to be just right. It has to be perfect. And if it can't be perfect, then I might as well not do anything at all. Sure. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, you know, doing something is better than doing nothing. And we talk a lot about consistency on, um, my website, and we actually have a something we call the Homeschool Consistency Boot Camp that we run a couple mm. of times a year for moms who are not slackers, but perfectionists, <laughs> and they're struggling with this concept. And we talk a lot about this, if you do something, even just a little bit to maintain your consistency, it's much better than just blowing off the day and doing nothing at all. So, so good. Yes. I love that. Yes. Just, I mean, I can tend to get that way with reading aloud. Like if we don't have a half an hour to devote to it, I can tend to think, well, that's a waste. But really, mm -hmm. five minutes is great here and there. That's awesome. And yeah, I can't, you can't um, throw everything out if you don't have all the time. So I think that's great. So good. I I love that. I might put that up on my cupboard this year. <laughs> <laughs> some is better than none. <laughs> yeah, some is better than none. Yeah. Um, yep. Okay, Marin, do you want to give us your next one? Yes, my next one is rock your strengths. Yeah. And what I mean by that is we, our homeschools are all going to look so different. Um, we are, we all have different personalities. I'm an ENFP, you know, Angela, you're an ISFJ. I mean, and not even, we don't have to go into Myers-Briggs, but just, you know, what are your strengths? What are your interests? Um, so I... I have had a complex about this in the past <laughs> because really my homeschool doesn't always look like a lot of other homeschool families. I'm not super organized. Um, I'm not super into, you know, I don't know, a tr maybe traditional learning, like sitting at a table, but I am great at exploring and I'm great at um, going down interest paths and um, uh, kind You're of unlocking curiosity and those kind of things. But, um, so I have to, uh, just, I have to be okay with that and not even be okay, but I have to really, um, love, love that about myself because I want my kids to know that I love that about myself too. So, right. You, yeah. When you are your best self, I've said this before, yes. when you are, be, when you are your best self, that is the best gift you can give your kids. Yeah. If you so were true. trying to be the homeschool parent who like had all these plans and brought out all right. the workbooks and sat at the table and did all that, yes. you wouldn't be giving your best self to your kids. Exactly. Yep. So it's so great that you're giving them the gift of you. And then hopefully they can um, do that for themselves when they grow up. Right, right. And, you know, it's it goes for, you know, book selection, too. And I just think sometimes there's lists of books that, you know, you just think this is really the right book list. This is the one I should be doing. But <laughs> like, what if you don't like those books? What if you have a whole <laughs> list of books that you're super interested in, but it just doesn't seem like it, sh you know, it's the right thing to do. But if it's the thing you love to do, then, you know, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Our homeschool model motto is you be you, yes. you know, That's you so be great. you and, and do you and don't worry about what anybody else is doing. Right. And that's, yeah. that is the freedom of homeschool. We get to do that. It is. 
I think it's so hard, though. I just have to say because, yeah. you know, we are bucking the system. Like, as homeschoolers, we're bucking the system. Um, we're already doing something non-traditional. Yep. And so it can feel scary at times. It yeah. can feel like, what am I really doing? Do I really even know what I'm doing? Mm-hmm. And um, so I think we can feel a bit insecure, or at least I can. Or at least at the beginning of our homeschool journey, I for sure felt insecure about how I was doing things. Sure. So I think it's hard. I think that's a really hard one to learn. Yes, it is. It is. I know. And we, you know, I think our culture is just, we have to, we're kind of going against the grain of the culture in so many ways when Mm -hmm. we're even, even homeschool wise. (laughs) Right. You know, so anyway. All right. Angela, how about you? Okay. So my next one is saying yes to one thing means saying no to something else. Mm -hmm. I talked about this, uh, I think a couple weeks ago on our podcast, Mm -hmm. But uh, I and it, again, it's something that I think about at the beginning of the year. But, you know, even something something like a class for one of your kids or an activity for one of your kids yeah. or a curriculum, it sounds really exciting. And you want to say yes, because you have the time. You have Thursday afternoons open. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> you know, let's do this. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I but I do have to remember that I am saying no to other things when I'm saying yes to that. I'm saying no to. Like maybe, I don't know, rest time in the afternoon or I'm saying no to being able to prepare dinner that day Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or I'm saying no to um, like maybe I'm spending money on that. And so then I have to say no to something else I might want to spend money on. And it just I don't typically think of those things in the moment when I'm really excited about this, you know, activity or this curriculum or whatever it is that I want to do. I think about all the fun reasons to say yes to it. And so I just think it's important to remember those things to factor into your decision making. I love this one so much. I mean, you're (laughs) always, even if it doesn't seem like there's anything it's up against, there's something it's Mm -hmm. up against, you know, like you said, and I love that you brought up, you know, I'm, I'm might be saying no to making dinner that day because we hear from so many moms who are like, how do I homeschool my kids and, you know, get the house clean or, and, you know, get exercise or, and have quality time to spend with my spouse. And it's like, you know what, you wake up every morning and you have to pick two. Yeah. You have to pick two <laughs> things that you're going to do reasonably well that right, day right. and everything else might be about halfway done. Right. And so, you know, it, you're always making choices um, about these kinds of things. I love that one. Yeah. Oh, yes. So good. All right, Pam, do you want to give us your next one? Yeah, because it kind of piggybacks off of the one that you just said. So okay. my next one is rowing harder doesn't help if the boat is headed in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Um, And so what I mean by this is it really, really helps to have a vision for your homeschool. Take some time, sit down, write out what things are important to you in your homeschool. Talk to your husband about it. Have a conversation with your kids. Um, My friend Amy Milsick actually makes a vision board with her kids where they Mm -hmm. cut words and pictures out of magazines Mm -hmm. and they paste them on a piece of poster board. But what is the intention and the atmosphere of your home going to to be each day? And when you have put that down on paper, when you, you have, you know, thought these things through, then it's so much easier to make these choices about saying yes to this one thing, or how much do I put in my schedule or what things take precedence in my schedule? What do I put first? Right. right. And so that's your, I always, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I call it the wall for your homeschool spaghetti. Mm -hmm. So if you throw (laughs) spaghetti at the wall to see if it's done because it's sticky. So your vision is your wall. You just everything that you think you want to buy, you think you want to do, you think you want to add to your day, throw it against that vision Mm. and see if it sticks or not. And uh, that helps you make. And that's what helps you be more confident in what you're doing with your homeschooling, because then you can articulate, this is what learning means for my family. This is what's important. And, you know, it's easier to say it to somebody else too, and be really confident in what you're saying. Yep. 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 I love that. That is so good. That's very good. I mean, yes. And it does go along with what Angela just said too. I think this is all so good for us to just Uh, realize there are priorities that have to be made here and they're hard decisions. But if you have a focus, if you have a, you know, a mission statement or something, you can say, is this, does this line up with what I believe is really important for our family this year? Yeah. Great. 
Marin, do you yes. want to give us your next one? All right. So my next one is everything is learning. And yeah. I, we talk about this a lot. You know, our kids are learning all the time. And so um, I really think about this when I've had a hard day and I don't feel like I'm actually teaching my kids anything. <laughs> and, you know, or maybe we're doing something fun. We're doing a fun field trip or something. And I don't feel like a ton of learning is happening. Mm -hmm. They're learning. They're yeah. taking in. They are sponges. <laughs> They're yeah. taking in so much and, um, you, we may, I might not have a lesson plan in front of me. Um, but it, their little, their brains don't care about that lesson plan. No. You know, they're learning. Um, and a lot of times we can just, uh, enhance that by having great conversations, um, exploring, you know, finding things that are very interesting to our kids because then the sponge is just, you know, it's just, uh, working <laughs> overtime, you know, it's like working so much. Um, um, yeah. And I just think, you know, having setting up, uh, situations where, um, our kids are free to figure out what they like to learn too. Um, all those things I think help so much. So any, anyway, everything is learning. If you have toddlers or babies and you're taking care of them so much during the day and you feel like I'm neglecting my older kids, guess what? They're learning. Our they brains are. were set up to learn. And they are taking right. in information all the time. Um, right. So. You can't stop it. You couldn't stop it if you no, wanted to. Exactly. So, yeah. Yes, <laughs> exactly. I like that one. Thank you. All right. All right, Angela. All right, my last one comes from Julie Bogart. Yes. And I think about it probably every day. <laughs> Maybe not every day, but probably every other day at least. <laughs> if there is crying, stop. Yes. And... This has been just such a great piece of wisdom for me because sometimes the crier is me mm -hmm. and sometimes it's one of my kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes it's, a... <laughs> it's not funny, but it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Sometimes it's me and sometimes it's one of my kids and mm -hmm. no learning is going to happen if they are crying, you know, right. like the math is not going to, they're not going to learn anything from that math problem yes. you're trying to do yes. if they are crying. So just stop and do it later. It's okay. It is okay. Yeah. And, um, it's just, I think, I think I didn't know this in my first couple years of homeschooling and I screwed up a one too many times mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. Like, let's just quick finish this. Oh, yes. I had that attitude. <laughs> there, uh, I heard Carlita Boyle speak a few years ago. She's the developer of a curriculum called Math on the Level. Mm -hmm. And she was talking about neural pathways in the brain and that if you have upset, you have crying, you have pain at the time somebody learns something, yeah. they're always going to associate that emotional response with whatever it is yeah. they learned right. if oh, they wow. have it at the same time. So if you have crying over fractions, Fractions are always, you know, that oh, yeah. the worst. It, it gets embedded in those neural pathways. So, yeah, anytime there's crying, just stop. Yeah. Gosh, if that isn't motivation to stop when there's crying or fighting or anger or whatever the negative emotion is, I don't know what is. Exactly. Um, that's really motivating. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then for our last one, our 10th um, thing that we've learned, uh, we kind of all agreed on our final one. And Marin is going to... Talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I think this is, we agreed this is a really important one um, and something to think about every day. Remember why you decided to homeschool in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think this is, I mean, you can all chime in here. I, this is so important because a lot of times we can get distracted and um, we start to think other things are more important than that reason. Um, and just to get back on track again. And refocus. I think, sorry, I think we get bogged down in the day to day. Yes. And yeah. so we we lose that vision yes. and other things become more important than that. Like yes. the problems become bigger than the why. But if we go mm -hmm. back to the why and yes. really think about it, anything that's going to prompt you to go against the norm so much is going to be so big that it it's going to eclipse, you know, problems that you're having with long division or the fact that the toddler is crushing Cheerios into the carpet while you're doing phonics with the five-year-old or, right. you know, it's going to be so much bigger than that, even though it doesn't seem like it in the day to day, because those little things bubble up and just drive us absolutely nuts. Yeah, they do. They do. <laughs> yes. 
they do. I was nodding along. They do. And I think um, our each of our whys are going to be different. Mm-hmm. Like each of our mm-hmm. main reason for homeschooling is different. When I talk to parents, I'm actually amazed that, you know, everybody has different big time, big reasons. And I yes. just think... It's so important to keep those front and center. That might be something that I put on my cupboard door. Mm -hmm. That's probably a good idea Mm -hmm. for something to keep there. Mm -hmm. Why do I want to do this? For me, it's connection, connecting Mm -hmm. with my kids. Mm -hmm. And so I have to remember that because other things can take over. Very easily. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, wow. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. Myron and Pam. Thank you guys for being here. Pam, thank you for for being with us today. Um, Yep. We love your wisdom. We hope everybody enjoyed this episode. Uh, So Pam, can you tell everybody where we can find you? And I also know you have a book, so I want you to mention that too. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I am at PamBarnhill.com. You can find all of the podcast over there, a link to the book. The book is Better Together, Mm -hmm. and it's Simplify Your Homeschool, Strengthen Your Family, and Savor the Subjects That Matter Most. It's Mm -hmm. all about how can you do this practice of morning time uh, even though you don't have to call it morning time and you don't have to do it in the morning. Mm-hmm. That just happens to be what I call it. <laughs> sure. How could you do this whole family learning um, for more efficiency in your homeschool and also to focus on some of those subjects that sometimes get pushed aside? And so the book is all about that. It's a very practical uh, little handbook of how you can make that happen in your homeschool. And you can find that at pambarnhill.com as well. Awesome. Yeah. Thank Great. you so much, Pam. Thank you, Pam. Well, thank you for having me. That was a really great conversation. It was. I hope some of that resonated with our listeners. Um, I bet many of you have some things that kind of stuck out to you. Or maybe you thought of your own uh, idea. What is your, what's on your list of things that, you know, that you've learned over the years of homeschooling? For I sure. Bet, I bet you've got lots of wisdom. If you would, If you have something like that that you'd like to share with us, We would love it if you could go over to Facebook and join our group, Unrefined Homeschoolers. It's a closed group. um, And I think we'll have a thread in there for this episode. And we can just talk about the things like what, what, what's the thing that stands out to you that you've learned over the years? Yes, that would be great. You know, because a lot of you have a lot of experience. In fact, yes. I'm sometimes overwhelmed by when I learn about you guys or you guys yeah. introduce yourselves to me by how many years you've been doing this or how yes. many kids you have or that you've graduated some kids. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And so um, we'd love to hear from you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to loving this week. Let's do it. Maren, what are you loving? Um. Okay, so I am loving... A, uh, and it's a toothpaste. Oh. And it is called, it, it's actually, the brand name is called Hello, but it's actually an activated charcoal toothpaste. Oh. So it's, it's like, it's black. It's a black, it's black toothpaste. Okay. <laughs> yes. I've heard of, I've heard of using activated charcoal for toothpaste, but I've never heard of an actual tube. Is this a tube? It's a tube. Oh, yeah. Okay. And you know what? It tastes, this is what I love about it. It tastes like regular toothpaste, hmm. which you might not think. It's activated charcoal, um, but it, it it tastes great. So I don't even, I can't even tell that I have, I'm using activated charcoal in my toothpaste, except that my teeth are black <laughs> while I'm brushing my teeth. Yeah. And actually activated charcoal whitens your teeth. It does. Ironically. Yes, exactly. <laughs> So that's yeah, awesome. So, and it's a detoxifier. I mean, it just does lots of great things. So where do you get that? I, I think I first got it on Thrive Market. Okay. Yeah. But also now have been ordering it right on Amazon. Oh, okay. Too. So it's I, right there. I've heard of that brand before because I got there. They have a good kid's toothpaste. Yes. That doesn't have fluoride in it. That tastes good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's not too kiddish looking. Yes, I know. And I think it's like a watermelon flavor. It's tricky. I know. <laughs> so tricky that's what my son uses oh, uh, because it doesn't look babyish. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And he likes that. But I didn't know they that's had important. activated charcoal. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm loving it. Yeah. All right. Angela, what are you loving this week? Okay. So I just thought I've never talked. I can't believe I haven't talked about this before, but I'm mm. going to talk about my favorite tank top. Let's hear about it. I've been using this tank top wait. for... At least two years. Wow. And I just. That's a commitment. It's good. It's the best. (laughs) I have looked around for other ones. 
And nothing. This one, nothing compares. This one's still my wow. favorite. Okay, so I get it from Ever Eve. Oh yeah. Okay. okay. And Ever Eve have has like, you know, brick and mortar stores, <laughs> and yes. they have some in our area. Yes. They also have online stores. So I don't. Okay. I don't actually go to a store. The first time Which I is... found this, I was in the store, and that's how I found oh, it. Oh, okay. But now okay. I just order them online. It's such a bonus when you can order online. For sure. In my book. <laughs> so this is called The Brand is Beloved. Now, okay. I've looked before. I think Ever Eve is the only place that carries it. Really? Yeah. So I don't know if it's an Ever Eve brand or what it is, but it's called Beloved. Okay. And they have, I just get the classic cami. Okay. But they have different like styles that you could get, the variations of this kind. I also okay. love the classic jersey tank. So the classic cami oh, yes. has like spaghetti straps. The Jersey tank has thicker straps, but the reason I love it, okay, first of all, they're one size, which I know that's- Really? I know that probably doesn't work. I don't know. It fits me. I okay. like the way it fits me. <laughs> so I'm okay with that label because it fits yeah. me, but I don't know if I was <laughs> yes. like smaller than me or bigger than me, would I think it really fits? I'm not sure. Okay. So, but I really like it. It's um, It's got spandex in it. So it's like mm. hugs your hugs your body. <laughs> so you wouldn't I'm loving this. <laughs> you wouldn't wear this just like as a summer tank top, probably. Okay, okay. Um yeah. you wear it definitely under clothes. I wear one every okay. single day. I probably mm-hmm. have ten of them. And I just wear one every day. And then I wear it to bed. I mean, I wear it Ooh, nice. It's like it's this like is... underwear. It's my favorite underwear, basically. Yeah. Just for my top. Yeah. And so great. I mostly love it because it hugs my body. Yeah, so it feels good. It feels good. It feels That's good. That's so great. Yep, and it like a lot of times the top part of it shows like if I'm wearing a V-neck, mm-hmm. it shows underneath yeah. the V-neck a little bit, which is what it's I like. So tricky, which is great. Yep, that's so great. I mean, I think women have so much to think about with like what to wear under their clothes and yeah. making it all work. So, yeah, because things show, and then you have to. I don't know. I know. Just, we have so much to think about. Right, <laughs> and I need a V-neck just the way that my body is. I need yep. a V-neck. But sometimes, you know, I can't have it go down too low. Mm-hmm. So having this underneath still gives me the V-neck look. But Maybe that's what, maybe I could do more V-necks if I had a tank top on all the time. Maybe. Because my problem is, you know, because I have a short torso, the V-neck is always way too low for me. Oh, right. Always. I mean, right. just almost always. So if I always had a tank top on. Yeah. It wouldn't matter. Right. Yeah. I'm going to check it out. You should. Definitely. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for listening. Um, We hope you enjoyed it. If you are interested, you can find us on social media. We are on Facebook and Instagram at Homeschool Unrefined. Mm -hmm. Um, We'd love to have you join that closed Facebook group we talked about, Unrefined Homeschoolers. We also have a website, homeschoolunrefined.com, where you can find links to everything that we talked about. And we will see you next week. Thanks for listening. Homeschool Unrefined is created and produced by Marin Gorse and Angela Sizer. Ethan Miller is our editor, and Amanda Ginn is our VP of all the important things.